Alright guys, welcome back to my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling for September 27th, 2012. And wow, this show here. Um, they're really going crazy with this Aces and Eights angle. I mean, they're doing... It's like a sitcom. It really is. And not a good one. The stuff they did here tonight looked like a cheap horror movie. It was just crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. So Hogan comes out. He's dancing with his baseball bat. Hogan was just a complete goofball here. And he says that um, he wants the fans to do him a favor and watch his back, Jack. He says Devon used to be a good champion, but negotiations, blah, blah, blah. We know Devon left. But Hogan's got to move on as general manager. He needs a TV champion, and he's going to decide between Magnus, Samoa Joe, uh, Garrett Bischoff, and Mr. Anderson. So he also says that Bobby Roode and James Storm is going to be a street fight at Bound for Glory, which I think is a good idea. This feud has so much history behind it. It's, it really can't just be a regular match at Bound for Glory. Um, but he also says that King Mo is going to be the special enforcer. I don't really care about that. But Hogan says he's going to the Aces Clubhouse tonight, and Sting comes out. I don't know where Sting's been, but Sting comes out and says he's got his back. He's going to watch his back, Jack. Uh, first match is Kurt Angle with AJ Styles versus Chavo with Hernandez versus Daniels with Kazarian. Taz says most humans don't like Daniels. He's slippery, shady, and seedy, even though I think Daniels has been pretty upfront about being a heel. Um, Hernandez and AJ get in the ring. They want to fight Daniels and Kazarian, so the ref kicks out everyone. Um, Angle and Chavo are wrestling each other. Daniels comes in, hits the STO on Chavo, gets the win. Um, because Daniels won here, I'm thinking we're going to see new tag team champions at Bound for Glory. Um, probably, at this point, I would say Angle and AJ Styles. Hogan's talking to Magnus, Joe, Garrett, and Anderson. Hogan says he needs to separate Magnus and Joe, so he eliminates Magnus. But keeps Garrett Bischoff. What a joke this is. I couldn't believe it. I was... I was afraid they might put Garrett Bischoff in the match later. They didn't. Hogan eventually goes with um, Joe and Anderson. But it, it was down to the wire. I was getting nervous about this. And thank God they didn't put Garrett in there. Brooke Hogan tells Tara there will be consequences. Tara takes a phone call. It's her Hollywood boyfriend. She says she's trying to get George and Stacy over for dinner. Brooke takes the phone, says her match is next. And then she steals her phone. What's with baby faces and stealing things lately? I don't get it, but Brooke Hogan stole Tara's phone. We get Tara versus ODB with Eric Young. Eric Young tries to hook up with Taryn Terrell. Um, Tara sells a knee injury and gets ODB in a small package and uses the ropes for the win. The best part about this match, though, was after ODB is pinned and her legs are over her head, she's still laying there. Tara's walking away with Taryn Terrell. And ODB is still in pinned position. And then she kicks out. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, Bruce Pritchard tells Al Snow he can be a wrestler or an executive. He can't be messing with Joey Ryan. And they talk about the gut check kid. Uh, Hogan tells Garrett it's not his time. And the fans clap. So thankfully, Garrett was eliminated. And now with Devon gone, hopefully we don't see him again for a very long time. He really needs to go to developmental. They got Crimson in developmental. And as much as I don't really care for Crimson, he's better than Garrett Bischoff. We know why Garrett Bischoff is there. Uh, so it's going to be Samoa Joe versus Magnus Slater. Backstage, Rude tells Ares he will be teaming with Bully Ray against Ares and Hardy. He says that he's going to be pulling for Hardy so that he can get an, another shot at the title. He tells Ares that he is the better wrestler. He thinks Austin Aries is better than Jeff Hardy. Um, he deserves the title more than Jeff Hardy. And I think he's just supposed to be planting the seeds to turn Aries heel in the future. So we get Samoa Joe versus Anderson for the TV title. This was alright. Samoa Joe chokes out Anderson for a very long time and wins the TV title. So Samoa Joe gets the belt. I think this is great for Joe. I'm glad he's getting a push. If they're going to have the belt defended every week, I'm happy that Joe's finally going to get some more TV time. 
Hogan tells Sting backstage he wants to do good cop, bad cop. This girl comes up, says she has some documents from Pritchard that Hogan needs to sign. She maces them. She maces Sting and Hogan. The aces attack, put bags over their heads, and throw them in the back of a rape van. There's more. More to come. So, gut check for Evan Markopoulos. Taz says yes. Pritchard says no. Al Snow says he's too young and not ready. So, no. He does not win. His gut check, it doesn't really matter. You probably, even if he won, you wouldn't see him anyways. So. Oh, man. Oh, and then we get another Ninja Turtle commercial. And I love hearing Tanae try to put over the new Ninja Turtles cartoon. That was really good. Um, shelling out justice, I believe he said. But I loved hearing that. Um, so, this part here. Sting and Hogan, um, they arrive at the clubhouse. And one of the aces has a machete. Joseph Park is strapped down to a table. Like I said, it's like a cheap horror movie here. The leader's got his back to him and he's talking. He still has like the um, distorted voice. And he actually looked like Bully Ray to me, but I think it may have just been the hat. The leader's personality doesn't really match up with Bully's personality. Um, but still, who knows? He says that he wants Hogan and Sting to pick two guys to face their two guys in a match at Bound for Glory. So they're going to pick two of their best, aces and eights, and they want Hogan and Sting to pick two of their best. Hogan and Sting want to do it, but the leader of the aces says, Hogan, this isn't about you. Um, you need to watch the destruction of your two best wrestlers. Um, so, if the Aces win, they get full access. Whatever the hell that means. And if they lose, they're gone. They're going to go away. One of them throws water in Hogan's face. Sting says you're a piece of crap, but they censor it to make it look like he said shit. Um, they tell Hogan, Park goes after the match. And Hogan agrees and tells them not to hurt Parks. Just don't hurt Parks! That's all Hogan cares about here. But that was it. It was just... What do you say about this? I mean, really, it's just so, so cheesy and stupid. But James Storm promo on how he's going to kick Rude's ass. He puts over King Mo. Main event is Bobby Rude and Bully Ray versus Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries. This was alright. Aries hits the Brain Buster on Rude. Hardy tags himself in. Hardy hits the Swanton for the win. Afterwards, Austin, Aries, and Jeff Hardy are arguing. Then we see the Aces return Hogan and Sting to the Impact Zone. They say, if you try anything, we're going to burn Parks. And Hogan's freaking out. They leave. Hogan's still tied up. Sting has to untie Hogan. Hogan's like, just untie me, damn it. And they got Parks. And Sting's like, I know they got Parks, but Hogan is really hung up on this Parks thing. And <laughs> that was how the show ended. It was just... To be honest, I was kind of bored during the show. I didn't really care about a lot of this. The Aces and Eights thing, I knew... I knew it was going to be goofy. But this is just... It exceeds my expectations for what they're going to do. Every week, they top themselves with how much you know, wacky crap they can fit into this Aces and Eights storyline. I think, okay, you know, they did they did something goofy last week, but this week, you know, they're going to get serious again. But no, they continue. They top the Joseph Park thing. Them knocking out Joseph Park and trying to give him amnesia so he forgets <laughs> the information he's found about the Aces. They top that. They kidnapped Hogan and Sting, put bags over their head, and brought them back to the Impact Zone and Hogan agrees to a match. I don't I don't understand why they had to kidnap Hogan for this. All they had to do was send one of those videos where they're sitting playing poker and said, hey, we want a match at Bound for Glory, and Hogan would have probably agreed to that, so I don't know why they even had to kidnap him. Um, but it just gets dumber and dumber. I don't, I don't know what they're going to do going forward with this. Um, but, yeah, this show, for the most part... I did think it was kind of boring. I didn't care about this gut check. There was no Joey Ryan, um, which I figure they're supposed to build up to Bound for Glory, so I was surprised they didn't have Joey Ryan on the gut check episode. But whatever. Um, Terran ODB, who really cares about that. Uh, new TV champion, match was all right. That was okay. 
Um, but yeah, it's just, I didn't really care much for this week's episode. So anyways, that's my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's episode in the comments below, and thanks for watching. Bye. So he also says that Bobby Roode and James Storm is going to be a street fight about for glory, which I think is a good idea. This feud has so much history behind it, it's, it really can't just be a regular match at Bound for Glory. Um, but he also says that King Mo is going to be the spin with his baseball bat. Hogan was just a complete goofball here. And he says that um, he wants the fans to do him a favor and watch his back, Jack. He says Devon used to be a good champion, but negotiations, blah, blah, blah. We know Devon left. But Hogan's got to move on as general manager. He needs a TV champion, and he's going to decide between Magnus, Samoa Joe, uh, Garrett Bischoff and Mr. Anderson. I mean, they're doing... It's like a sitcom. It really is. And not a good one. The stuff they did here tonight looked like a cheap horror movie. It was just crazy. Crazy, crazy stuff. So Hogan comes out. He's dancing. Alright guys, welcome back to my review of this week's TNA Impact Wrestling for September 27, 2012. And wow, this show here. Um, they're really going crazy with this aces and eights angle. 